very good morning to you all. Uh, I'm Chris Sharma, Financial Services Sector Lead at Canonical, Commissioner of Quinto. Personally, with two decades of management consulting and large scale program delivery experience, I have witnessed firsthand one of the issues that financial services institutions grapple with is managing software operations. In today's session, what I'm going to demonstrate is how open source tools and the community can come together to address the enterprise software operations challenge. So let's take a look at the big picture. The financial services industry is in the middle of a perfect storm. Why would I say that? Macroeconomic conditions are shifting, the customer expectations is rising, you have got new technologies, there is a lot of competition in the fintech space and the regulatory impact. So what do organizations have to do, right? They would have to sustain, they would have to grow and transform continuously. And that rate of change is rapid. So what are the challenges that organizations are facing? It's that they would have to adapt really quickly. They would have to catch up with innovations. And as we all know in the financial services industry, we have to deal with complex application landscape. What are the underlying challenges though? The underlying challenge is aging technology infrastructure, but for this topic and for this presentation, I'm going to focus on software operations and the integration, which are two key challenges which financial institutions have to grapple with. 20, I think we come across that principle quite often. Uh, any guesses in the context of IT budget, what 20 stands for? 20% is all that financial institutions are left with when we look at the breakdown of a change budget. The 80% of your change budget is spent either on mandatory change, process re-engineering, and especially on aspects of revenue growth. So how will organizations manage that rapid change? Right? If you have got a set budget and you're spending a lot on software operations and maintenance, there is hardly anything that's left for your innovation, for your change in terms of R&D and providing innovative services to your end customer. And that's where smart operation comes in. If you're able to optimize your operations, yeah. if you're able to automate software operations, you have got more left to innovate and be able to adapt. So let's look at what is the expectation of software on We believe and what we wish for is that software operations is simple, it's reliable, and it works every time, like our trusted kettle, right? We actually flip on a button, we have got a hot cup of water for our tea or coffee. That's what we wish for. But what's the reality, right? I think we all come from financial service institutions to know that enterprise software operations are costly, it's messy, it's hard, it takes time to resource. That's the reality that we have to face with. So why is it that hard? What are the operational challenges that we have to face? Software maintenance. We have got software lifecycle management. Integrating new applications within only a complex landscape. And then you have to deal with service orchestration. All of this leads to a higher total cost of ownership. From a business standpoint, what they expect IT to deliver is an innovation platform. Something that will help the business to innovate. In order to do that, one way we can actually reduce and optimize software operations is automation. Open source is everywhere. Now, Based on the report by the Linux Foundation, 80% of any given piece of modern software is open source. I think we are in open source. Forum and then we'll fix it later in post. Can open source um, tools and the community can they come together and solve the yeah. problem of in the software operations? Slides on the projector. Now when you're using an application yeah. like Sandra or Kafka yeah. within your yeah. enterprise, it is open source. Yeah. When Application code is open we'll source. Get, we'll get it can be open source software operations, understanding yeah. 
and the knowledge that is within the mind system administrators, the best practices that they have got in terms of installation of the application, deployment of that application. But it's not only just the day one operation, the day one task, it's, it's about the day two operation. Can we do that? Thank you. So let's look at a case study here. Uh, I think if you have been in other sessions, you would have uh, heard about Legend, an application that was open sourced by Goldman Sachs. And what we thought is what better way to demonstrate the value of software automation if we could pick up Legend as an application which is open sourced by a community member and within a few days can we try our hand at using open source to bring the community together to address the problem for software operations. So for those of you who haven't been in the earlier sessions, have not come across Legend, very briefly Legend is a data management platform, it's a data tooling platform, it's an environment which is being widely used in pricing, risk and other business functions. As I said, it's, it's contributed by Goldman Sachs. The team has worked internally on that application for seven to eight years and they have open source certain components to Finos. Now that's the power of open source. You have got an application, it's open source to the community. Now other financial institutions can get involved, they can utilize that too. So let's look at the 30,000 feet view of what that application is. It's, it's not an architecture diagram, as you could see, it's just a schematic. But even at that high level, what you see is there are four components which currently have been open sourced to Finos, which is Studio, uh, you have got the engine, the data modeling engine, and you've got SDLC server and GitLab. Now, even from the schematic, you can appreciate that deploying this application would be complex because there are four different sub applications for that you know enterprise application we have to consider that that would take time that would take resources and what financial institutions really require the value of their software engineers working is on creating a business application on that platform not spending their time on deploying that application so imagine a scenario if the Click of a button, you know, going back to the analogy of kettle. Uh, if we get, we get a bottle of water. Can we do the same thing with, with the deployment of application, an enterprise-grade application like Legend, deploy with a click of a button? Yes, we can do that. And that's what we have done together as an open source community. The command that you have to use <clears throat> is juju deploy finos legend bundle. That's one single command that you would have to type in to deploy that application right from the scratch. Now, I'll get into it, like what is the magic behind this, right? What, what is it that, that actually does what institutions have to spend a lot of time and effort deploying that application? And it's also about not once, right? You have to create multiple environments, developer environment, which you'll have to create multiple times. You will have to have a staging environment. You will have to have pre-prod, Environment. And you can imagine the number of time organizations would have to set up and the amount of time and resources is spent. That one command can do the magic, but let's understand what's behind that. So what are the key ingredients for it? Right? What, what is the magic? There are two things here, charmed operators, and in simple terms, I think it looks a mouthful, charmed operators. Uh, those of you who are closer to Kubernetes world, you would understand that operator is nothing but a design pattern. In simple terms, operator is an application code plus the code, the software code that actually encapsulates the knowledge that's in the mind of system administrators. So it's about actions on those applications and the application code together that is together combined to call as an operator. And we call it as charmed operators because we are not only helping organizations to deploy and install it the first time but also the day-to-day task, which is about management of an application. You know, moving away from the concept of just configuration management to application management. So in short, charmed operators are nothing but trying to capture the application domain knowledge and distill it into a code. So that's one ingredient. The second ingredient that you saw on the command line, which was Juju deploy in and bundle, what is Juju? And Juju is an operator lifecycle manager. So it's a framework that allows you to manage the functions and actions that you want to do for the software deployments and 
you can have multiple chunks. So this is almost like an abstraction layer which allows you to manage the chunks, which are applications and the software deployment code together, and, and, and that's a framework. It's a hundred percent open source tool. It's, as I said, it's, a, it's an operator lifecycle manager, and integration is built in it. It's not an afterthought. It is ready for a hybrid multi-cloud scenario. For financial institutions, I think it's acceptable. It has become a status quo that some of your workloads, organizations are pushing into the public cloud, and majority of your workloads will run on prem in your private cloud. It's also vendor agnostic because if you decide to run your application on, for example, AWS, or you run your application on Google Cloud, or on Azure, it can work. So effectively, it's a concept that that tooling is vendor agnostic, hybrid multi-cloud ready. So enough, enough of talking, I think that was just a concept. Now let's see that in action, right? Let's have a look at that. So here what you're seeing is Juju status. It says that it's completely, there's nothing, it's starting from scratch. What we have done, you could actually see the Juju command, Klaus command is trying to look at the resources. So it's got an LXD container, which is hypervisor, and then it's running on microgates, which is a Kubernetes environment. The command line Juju bootstrap is what the abstraction layer is, which allows multiple applications to, to run together, and that's what Juju is controlling uh, environment. We have just added the model, which is the Pinos Legend model. It's nothing but a workspace which confines the computer environment, the computer resources, uh, define the boundary, and now what we will do is play that command. Juju deploy Pinos Legend bundle. And the channel is edge, so you could actually have multiple channels where you could have a beta release, you could have a, a deployment release. You, you can look at it, it can run on various architectures. Uh, here it is. So the services are started. So remember when I was talking about that high level schematic, uh, there were four components, right? You had got the studio, which is the front end, you had the SDLC engine, you had the server. Effectively, as you could see on there, uh, they are working. The reason why you could see them as blocked initially is because if there are interdependencies between application, as it's trying to integrate two different applications, it will be in the block status. And once you have got those right parameters, uh, it, it starts to become active. And now, as you can see, even if you fast forwarded it within four to five minutes, I think the bundle was deployed. The next step is you will have to authorize the GitLab application. So effectively, we have to actually capture the token there, it's about certificate. We provide the certificate. So we have actually captured the token from GitLab, provide the token. And this step, as you could see, is, is, is the step that's required in the setup of the application itself. It's an application requirement, not the Juju and Chance requirement. So you can see all the, all the services are active, uh, you would actually capture the IP address of the studio. You go to the, to the browser, to the studio, you have the port 8080. Uh, you would actually see that uh, the legend app is already set up and you would see the, the studio deployed. So that's, if, if you actually work on legend, if anybody is there from Goldman Sachs and they work there, it's, it's actually the application is, is deployed. Uh, the next step, which is the final step here, is about authorization of the end user, which I think if you have got a private instance of GitLab, you would have your own LDAP uh, server, LDAP directory, or Active Directory, where your users are authorized to use a particular application. So the next step, if you would actually put it in there, it will say it needs authorization, uh, and that's the final step. So effectively, I think uh, if you were a system admin, if you were a DevOps engineer, uh, you literally could actually start this, uh, go and grab a cup of coffee and your bag, and your application is installed. And this application, I think, uh, we have been uh, interacting with the community. And Legend application, as I said, it was open source by Goldman Sachs and other financial institutions like Deutsche Bank and, and others. Uh, they were quite interested to deploy Legend within their own enterprise, and they have spent quite a bit of time deploying it, uh, you know, various ways of deploying it, and that was a pain point. And what we have done as an open source community is address that enterprise pain point. So as you can see, 
it's, it's, it's actually deployed. So let me just give you a very high level view. I'm not going to get into the technical details of what it is, but the concepts about what was Bootstrap, right? So the point that I was making earlier is, is, is actually independent of the substrate. You could deploy this application on AWS. If you already have VMware with a new enterprise, you could deploy that. So it can run on Kubernetes, it can run on VMware, or you could deploy the application on VMSW. The key, what, what is the magic here is, is Juju. It is that controller, Juju controller, which is an abstraction between your substrate within the hardware and the application that's going to run on top of it. That's Bootstrap, and then you have got the applications. Now, as I was telling you, uh, charmhub.io is the web store where you would have the charms, which is charmed operators. Again, for those of you who have joined recently, operators are the application code plus the code for deploying the application that's publicly available, and it's again an open source project, it's charmhub.io. You could go there, there are close to around, close to 400 charms that already exist, and some of those applications you might be using internally within your organization. So that's the concept of Bootstrap, and then again, there was another command that you would have seen, that add model, and you'll be wondering what that model is. Effectively, uh, again, in Kubernetes world, if you're trying to draw it, it's nothing but namespace, you have trying to allocate a set of machines, set of resources, uh, what it does, it actually isolates your service. Once you have defined it, it works within the boundary of it. Uh, you can actually authorize, as you can see, it provides you access control. You don't want anybody within the organization having access to that application. So you've got access control to it. Uh, it's repeatable. So this is exactly the reason why you can deploy this application on any cloud or any substrate, because it's repeatable once you've defined uh, the, the, the parameters, once you find what's really required to run that application, uh, you can deploy that application anywhere. And then that model can transfer from one cloud to another. So it's repeatability, and then it sets the boundaries to which it will work. What you saw earlier, that command, like do to deploy, what you could have done, you could have, have deployed each application independently. You could have said do to deploy Finos Legend Studio. You could have gone ahead and said do to deploy Finos Legend Server. The reason why I'm saying this is it's important in the context. If you have got other charms, other applications that you want to integrate, you have already got set up an environment and you run the command to deploy another application, another charm that connects and integrates those applications with the ones that are already existing with the enterprise. So that's, you can actually do that, but what we run, the command that you would have seen is juju deploy finos legend bundle. And as the name says, it's a bundle, it's a collection of applications. And that logic of integration and the dependencies is already built and defined in the bundle. So you did you deploy in Oscillator bundle, and effectively what has happened in the backdrop is it is exactly deployed each application. It has taken care of the interdependencies between those applications. And the final output was the application was up and running. So one single command and you have got application running. I did touch upon the other point as well as to say software operations, but the challenge for enterprises is integration. You have existing landscape, you have to integrate one application with another. And for all of you who have been in the industry, you would realize that integration is slow, it's hard, it's complex, it's costly. What we have done with the Juju tool is let's look at the two application components that we have deployed. One was the studio, which is the front end. Uh, you have got the SDLC, it requires a credential, you get the credentials uh, and one application provides the credentials and the other application requires it. So if there are endpoints and the interface is matching, it's as simple as Juju Relate. Relate is integrating two applications. The one point that I actually want to leave the thought with and I was touching earlier is in order to respond to that rapid change, organizations are adopting a hybrid cloud strategy. Uh, it's a journey. Uh, majority of the institutions are somewhere in the spectrum, right? They will have some workloads which they have decided it makes sense uh, to, to actually be on the public cloud. And some of the workloads, of course, are running on front, right? In that scenario, if you had the studio which is running on Amazon, for instance, your front end, and then you had the server running on Ranch, for example, and then you have got uh, micro case environment set up for your hosted GitLab. The beauty here is that Juju abstracts that conversation between applications. Your workload can be deployed anywhere. Once you have defined your model, 
it can actually integrate those applications which are on different clouds. So the summary I would ask, I would you know leave it and I'll tell you is uh, projects, open source projects like Juju and Charms, what are they doing? They are simplifying integration. They are simplifying software operations. Uh, we have seen the demo, I think as you would have seen. If you would like to know more uh, in detail as to how that's working, I've got with me uh, the whole canonical team outside. They've got a group, please, uh, you know, while you're grabbing a cup of coffee, do spend some time with them. Uh, I've got from the, you know, from the engineering team as well, Balbir is here, uh, who would be happy to spend some time with you and explain in detail as to how that deployment became so easy, right? What, what is Juju and, and the various elements of it? Effectively, we are, I think we are getting a step closer to that vision of, you know, just clicking a button. With one click of a button, you can actually deploy an application right from scratch. And this is an enterprise grade application, but keep that in mind. So that, that's basically it. I think uh, we had a problem statement. Uh, we, we looked at it, how we are trying to solve the problem. Any questions?